story of escape. Escape, to get away as by flight, to break away, get free, or get clear from or out of detention, danger, or the like. To avoid or elude a threatened ill, to miss imminent pain, punishment, or misfortune, to issue from confinement or enclosure. Escape. Each week at this time, the National Broadcasting Company presents Escape. Stories of deliverance from evil. Drama of both fiction and real life. Stories of men and women who, by their own actions, thoughts, and deeds, win their fight to escape. Tonight, escape from autumn. The hills were alive with color. From every slope, tapestries of gold and amber, fiery red and waning greens were bathed in the reflected glory of the setting autumn sun. Old Hank Morton leaned on the sprawling pile of rounded rocks that had once formed a boundary line between his land and that of his neighbor, James Evans. The day was almost over, and the slanting rays of sunlight caught the gray and brown stubble on his face with their glistening light. Old Hank was thinking, and anyone could have told that he didn't much relish his late afternoon thoughts. Hank's face was a barometer for his mind. Today, he was worried. Worried as he sensed the end of summer, thinking, uh, it ain't right, that's all. Just don't seem to be right. Of course, I suppose I'm being selfish and all that. But when a man's done all he could, and done pretty well according to most standards, I figure he ought to be able to have some say in a matter as important as this is. Like a man's own flesh and blood was being taken from him, and it doesn't... Uncle Harry? Uncle Harry? Yes, what? Just yes. <laughs> Here, now, hold on there, young and Now, hold on. Dick Mason's daddy is back home from war. He's come back for good. Well, now that must make Dick feel pretty good, huh? Yeah. He was at school today. Dick's father, I mean. Uh-huh. And he talked to us in assembly. It was awfully exciting. All about... Well, was he all right? Or er, not hurt, I mean? He had a cane. Limped a little. But he said he'd manage all right. He's a real hero. Gee, Dick's a lucky fella. Well, how do you mean, Penny? Well, his father back home again. Gosh, I wish... Uncle Hank. Yes? When do you think... I know what you're going to ask me, Teddy. Will it be for much longer? Well, I hope not, youngster. You've been a brave boy for a long, long time. I've missed him, Uncle Hank. Well, of course you have. Me too. But nothing we can do about it, is there? Nope. Uncle Hank. Hmm? What's the trouble? Trouble? Oh, what do you mean, Penny? I don't know. You seem so funny. Not like you were all summer, but sort of solemn. Are you mad at me? Oh, heavens, no. <laughs> Whatever gave you that idea, boy? Now you get along with you now before I decide to exercise a little discipline now. <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> Hurry up with your chores, Uncle Hank. I'm hungry. That night, there was much animated conversation. Penny's first day at school provided more than enough after-supper talk until bedtime came along. And Hank was careful to listen with more than his usual attentiveness, careful to laugh and be gay when the occasion demanded. For Penny was aptly named, bright, alert, and the very echo of Hank's own moods. He had sensed the older man's preoccupation that afternoon in spite of his own excited gaiety. Later, after Penny had said his prayers and then tucked in bed, old Hank had sat up far past his bedtime, rocking gently in the old cherry wood rocker, drawing on a never more than half-lit pipe, thinking. 
always thinking. My duty towards God and towards my neighbor. To love him as myself, and to do to all men as I would they should do unto me. I wonder if I've done my duty, James, to you, my neighbor. I guess you're James and Ellen Evans, huh? Well, I'm your neighbor, Hank Morton. Oh, we're glad to meet you, sir. Yes. Here, now, none of that church stuff. We're going to be neighbors, not distant acquaintances. Oh, well, sorry, I I didn't mean to. You see, Hank, we're newlyweds. I know you are, and I don't aim to butt in neither. But I just had to say hello and welcome you to our hill. I'm a bachelor myself, but if there's anything you need or want, just ask me. I've lived all my life here, and I love it. And I want you folks to love your new home as much as I do. That's all. Thank you, Hank. I know we shall. And you're going to be our very first friend. Yes, sir. Or, I mean, uh, Hank. (laughs) (laughs) And and thanks for greeting us like this. Oh, it's swell. But, Hank, darling, you shouldn't have done that. Well, uh, why not? You've been keeping me in butter and eggs for weeks. Watch a few logs of wood. A back-breaking chore. Oh, no, not for me. That's how I keep limber these days. When the time comes that I can't split a cord of wood, <laughs> well, I'll know that I'm done for. Oh, you're a dear. Tell you what, first fire we make, you're going to share it with us. <laughs> uh, I hope you'd say that, Ellen. I was aiming for an invitation. <laughs> and I'm going to accept. Oh, well, that is if you're sure James won't be too jealous. Oh, Hank. <laughs> you're wonderful. <laughs> Looks like this is the real thing, Hank. Well, she's being a real fighter, James. I'd, I'd better see if I can't get a hold of Dr. Moore. Why, well, you will do nothing to the short... The wares are down in the count of the storm. I've already tried to reach up my phone. Oh. Well, then I'll have to go No. On. You'll stay here with Ellen. She needs you. I'll go into town and bring him out with me. But the roads are icy, Hank, and, and there may be drifts. What with all this wind? I and... know my way into town without backers, James. Now, you keep Ellen warm. And get some water on the boil. And I'll be back with Doc just as soon as possible. I... I don't know what to say, Hank, or how to thank well, you. Well, don't thank me yet. Just hope I get back in time. But, uh, James. Yeah? Tell Ellen I love her, too. Tell her to keep her chin up. Thank God. In time. James. Did you... Is it a boy or, or, or... It's all over. A boy. Here, sit down. You look as though you, you needed a doctor. A boy, huh? It's all over. A boy. An elephant. <laughs> James. Is she all right? Is Ellen all right? It's all over. Forever. She's dead. Why, God? Tell me why. Slowly, Hank Morton tapped out his pipe, rose from the rocker, turned out the light, and carefully made his way to bed. He shivered as he quickly undressed in the chill autumn night. It was getting old, he reflected. If only he could stop thinking about James and Ellen, gone so soon, long before her time, and Penny, but mostly about James, his neighbor. Oh, sure, I could have feel it, of course, Hank, but I couldn't do that, not and stay honest with myself. Well, I know how you feel, yes. I wish I was a little younger, that's all. Oh, you did your share in the last scrap. 
Now, it's my turn now, and I don't mean to skip it. Well, you have to be true to yourself, James. If you believe in what you're going to do, go ahead and do it. But what about Petty? Well, if he were any older, I'd fight to stay home and bring him up right. But, well, he's just a kid, and maybe this won't mean too much heartache now. Well, uh, Petty's got a lot of spring and bounce. Uh, don't you worry about him, James. Besides, I, uh, I wanted to talk to you about that, Hank. But it uh, doesn't seem right that you should be burdening burdening yourself with bringing up a youngster while I'm in service. Oh, don't seem right, eh? And who could do it any better? Oh, whoa. No, I didn't mean Well, that. who's been teaching them to fish and heist the sail in the sound? Who's been giving them little odds and ends of chores so he can make himself useful around the place, eh? Oh, well, I'm sorry, Hank. I'm not ungrateful, I... Well, I only wanted you to know you that You sent I... that boy to any relatives, and I'll... Uh... uh... Oh, I hate you. I don't know what I'll do. Besides, maybe I'm being presumptuous, James, but I think Ellen would want him to grow up here, right at home, where he first saw daylight. Ah, oh, you've made me very happy, Hank. I know what Ellen would have wanted. Now that I know you want it that way, too, that's how it'll be. Thank God for you, neighbor. The dawn came all too soon. Carrying in its wake a tingling sand of upstate mountaintops and a hint of frost to come. Both Penny and Hank woke early, did their chores briskly, and sat down to a steaming hot New England breakfast. Mmm, swell elegant. Yeah. Well, a grown body needs plenty of food. It's got to be good food, or else you wouldn't have no use for it, huh? You're growing too, Uncle Hank, aren't you? Well, I reckon so, Penny. Yeah, just like an old oak tree. <laughs> an oak tree? <laughs> sure. Or a maple, or elm. Well, any kind of tree you want, Dave. Oh, you're kidding, Uncle oh, Hank. Oh, no, sir. Bob, I'm not, no. How does it feel to be as old as you are? Okay. Do you really think I'm old? Well, not exactly. But you're lots older than I am. Yeah, 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 I reckon I am. I reckon, yeah. Well, but that don't make us any less friends, does it? No, sirree. Next to my daddy, you're the only person I really like. But tell me, how does it feel to be... Well, you know. Well, it, it, like I told the other, like a tree must feel. Yeah, when you're young, like you, you feel like a sapling. Your roots ain't so long, they don't go so deep into the soil. But they're deep enough so as you can get nourished with all the things you need for living out of the soil. And you bend in the wind. And if you're not too careful, the hot sun and the cold frost will blight you. It'll make you wither away before your time. And that's how you feel when you're in the spring of life. Then comes summer. Your leaves fill out and they become a handsome green. Ah. A tree in summertime is something like your daddy James. A grown man. Gosh, Uncle Hank. I never thought... Gee. Yes. Then comes the autumn, Penny. Your roots are firm and deep, embedded and twisted in the earth. You still get life and nourishment, but the time comes when life is drained out of your veins. Sun grows cooler. The winds are chill. And even though your bark is thick and hard, you feel the change. But trees are pretty in autumn. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're right, that is. There is a beauty that comes with age. Yeah. Sort of a last-ditch fight that you put up before you know that old winter will get you. Makes a swell show for a while. And then, and then... Yes, Uncle Hank? Then comes winter. 
Go on. Tell me what it feels like. <laughs> no, no. I couldn't if I wanted to. <laughs> I'm not that old. Besides, you're going to have to step brisk pace if you're intending to get to school before that old school bell rings. <laughs> Go on out. Along with it. Go on. The sun was rising higher in the heavens. Outside was peace, contentment, and rich fulfillment in harvest. But inside the house, it was much darker. Penny had gone to school. Old Hank sat quietly at the breakfast table, thinking again. His gnarled fingers reached into one of the pockets of the tattered old vest, which he seldom went without. They clutched a crumpled piece of paper, well read, only a few days old, but so well memorized he could almost hear the words coming from James' lips. Old neighbor, I don't know how to tell you this in words. All the gratitude I've stored up for years just won't seem to flow into sentences and grammatical construction. I wish I could express all the warm things I feel in my heart for you and what you've done for Penny and me. I can't. And that brings me to a rather painful subject, Hank. The story of me. A story that has an ending. You see, old friend, I've been banged up a bit. And I won't be coming home. The medics don't give me much longer. A week or so. That's all. Nothing I can do about it. I fought. I'm still fighting. But some things must take their course. Just like the rivers which end up in the sea. No matter how their course is changed, they make their way to their everlasting home. It's my turn now. Promise me you'll tell Penny when the telegram comes. Maybe I've done you wrong by telling you this now, but somehow I feel that you should know first. We'll give you a chance to think over what and how to tell the youngster. Goodbye, Hank. I'll leave you with many burdens, more than you deserve to be late. Maybe they be light for your shoulders. Your loving friend and neighbor. James. Right out of day, huh? Yep, couldn't be better. Oh, yeah. Hank, I, I've got a... Uh, you got a wire for me? Afraid I have. You came bringing out from town. So it's come at last. Too soon. Ain't you going to open it? Huh? Uh, oh, well, no, Elmer. Not, not yet a while, though. I know what it says. I'm sorry. Awful sorry, Hank. Yeah, me too. James was a fine man. You, you ain't going to tell the youngster for a while, are you? Not tell Penny? He's pretty young. You, you wouldn't want to hurt him more than necessary. Well, uh, you're wrong about that. I am going to tell him. But, Hank, it is. It wouldn't be fair not to. Neither to James nor to Penny. You think it's wise, Hank? It's the only thing to do, Albert. The thing is... is well, how to do it? You're awful solemn again, Uncle Hank. Oh, am I, Penny? Yeah. Please, I wish there was something I could do to make you cheer up. Oh, there, now, I'm sorry, young man. It's the coming of winter, I guess. Hey, that reminds me, too. 
Never did finish that story of mine about growing old like a tree, did I? Nope. Well, I guess I will now. Yes. You see, Penny, there are times when my story don't hold good. You see, sometimes a man has more than one job to do here on Earth. Maybe two big jobs. He finishes one. And God says, that's enough. The man's done his share. Maybe the other job is left undone. But there's always someone else to tend to it as part of his old job. Sometimes, too, the forest gets a little overcrowded. Some trees die so that others can reach the light, grow, live. That's the thing about winter, Penny. Sometimes it comes in a man's prime. I understand. Do you, boy? Are you sure? Yes, Uncle Hank. A telegram came today. What? Where from? Who sent it? Here it is. I have a dope with it. Maybe you'd better do it. All right. The War Department regrets. Oh, Uncle Hank. It's Daddy. James. He's gone. Yes, yes. You see, it's like I was telling you. Sometimes a man's job is done and he's prime. Sometimes, when he goes, a little more light and sun shines on those of us left behind. A little more life for us. For a moment, for a moment, nothing more was said. Then, Penny stood up, walked to the door, and went out into the autumn night. Old Hank made as if to follow him, and then thought better of it. A young man's grief is a solitary thing. There'd be time to share it, and to forget it. Hank busied himself about the house, tidying up the supper dishes, putting another log or two on the cheerful fire. He knew Penny would be all right. And now, for the first time in many months, he felt younger. His new burdens had overthrown the nagging load of the autumn of old age. Hank looked up at the autumn sky. Then... He went inside, closed the door, and sat by the fire, waiting for Penny. You have heard Escape from Autumn, written by Alan M. Fishburne and directed by Norman Felton. The National Broadcasting Company has presented another story of Escape. Cliff Subir was heard as Hank, Leonard Smith as Penny, Ralph Camargo played James. Your narrator is Cleve Kirby. And same station, NBC will bring you Escape from royalty. This is the National Broadcasting Company.